Hello, and welcome to the Learn Kubernetes with Google video series. I'm Bob Killen, a Kubernetes contributor and program manager here at Google. In this short video, we'll go over one of the available scaling metric types that can be used by the horizontal pod autoscaler, the resource type. Now, this does assume you know what the horizontal pod autoscaler is, and you have some knowledge on the pod on pod requests and limits. If you're unsure or like more information on that, go check out the introduction video you can find on this channel. Now, with that out of the way, let's dive right in. So to begin, what is a resource? Or more specifically, what is a resource with regard to the horizontal pod autoscaler? A resource is one of the available metric types that can be used with the horizontal pod autoscaler, or HPA, in the v2 versions of the API. In this case, it is v2 beta 1 and v2 beta 2. This demo will be using the v2 beta 2 uh, throughout all the examples. Now, it actually maps back to the types of resource requests that can be used when defining requests and limits on the pod. So that's, that's a bit of a mouthful. Now, these resources are currently CPU and memory, but it actually leaves the door open to other potential resources in the future. This gives us an easy way to scale up or down our application based on the various resource utilization, CPU or memory. Now, this is a little bit of a segue, but I kind of want to point something out. When actually evaluating to scale up or down an application, the HPA uses requests, not limits. This is because the Kubernetes scheduler actually uses requests when assigning workloads to nodes. There are multiple reasons for that, but honestly, that could really be a talk or multiple talks in and of itself. So with that caveat out of the way, let's actually walk through a quick example. Here we have our MyApp deployment. It's set with two replicas to start and two containers within the pod. A front-end container with 100 millicores requested and a back-end container with 200 millicores requested. We have our uh, corresponding horizontal pod autoscaler object. It targets our MyApp deployment via the scale target ref. You can see the matching API version uh, kind and name. We also uh, can see the sort of ceiling or limit of where we want to scale our objects up to. In this case, we want to scale the pod uh, max up to five replicas or scale it down at most to one. The big goal is that we want to sustain an average utilization of 40% across all the replicas of the pods in the MyApp deployment. It uses the combined total of the resources requested by the pod in this case, 300 millicores, and then factors in the target average utilization, 40%. The HPA will then try to ensure that the average utilization across all the pods would stay around 120 millicores, or 40% of 300 millicores. It will keep the total number of pods deployed between 1 and 5 and ensure it maintains that average. Now, this actually sort of comes off as turning requests into a limit but you can also push the percentage above 100%. In our, if our average utilization target was say 200%, it wouldn't scale up the replicas until it was using well beyond what we have actually requested for it. In this instance, we have just defined you know, what the base requirements are for it to run. Now, with that, we've, we've been looking at resources and their utilization, but the resource target actually supports two types of evaluating resource metrics not just the one we've been looking at. There's utilization, which is the one we're familiar with, and then there's average value, which we haven't looked at yet. To put it simply, utilization rep represents a percentage of the resources you're targeting, and average value represents the direct value of that resource. So instead of 40%, you'd want to target 120 millicores. There are essentially two ways of representing the same thing, and you can pick which metric target works best for your application. Using the resource metric should enable you to take advantage of auto-scaling within Kubernetes without having to in invest a lot of effort in developing your own thing or various um, rules outside of it. It's a nice little way of, you know, just being able to dynamically handle load. The big thing is you need to remember to define resource requests on the pods you wish to scale. If you don't do it, the 
HPA won't really know what to do and you'll be stuck at the, you know, however many replicas you define in your deployment. Now with that, I, I hope I've helped you gain a little bit more insight into the resource metric type. If you are interested in learning um, more about some of the other potential metric types the H, uh, that the HPA can use or other concepts in Kubernetes, check out some of the other videos in this series. With that, I'm Bob Killen and take care.